Good day. Television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. The subject of the day with Grigor Amizanyan. The Grey Wolves succeeded in dismantling the monument to the genocide committed against Armenians of Holland. From January 23 to April 12, training champs will be announced in Eastern Armenia. Moscow is working towards concluding the Treaty of Peace between Baku and Yerevan, head of General Directorate of the Russian Federation. On the issue of Armenians of Western Armenia, the UN reporter conveyed his concern to Baku regarding the destruction of Armenian heritage in Artsakh. Statement of the Gardeman Shirvan Ahijevan Pan Armenian Union on Vandalism by the so called Garandian of Culture in Baku. The deputy of the third convocation of the National Assembly of Western Armenia, Grigor Amirzayan, quoted Hikmet Hajiv's opinion in his microblog that Baku has no longer military goals, the war is over for them. Hikmet Hajiev, a close assistant of the head of Baku, denied fears that Baku is planning to cut a load corridor through the territory of Armenia to Nahijevan by force of arms. Speaking about the negotiations between Baku and Yerevan, Hajiev noted that there are still discussed issues and emphasizing at the same time that they are much closer to peace and no longer uh, see serious problematic issues. For more information about the topic, you can see in the video, published by Grigor Amirzayan. Back on December 1, Western Armenia TV wrote that the Turkish Working Wolves Group, recognized as a terrorist in several countries, managed to dismantle the monument created in memory of the victims of genocide against Armenians in Kölen. Uh, we reported that the order to dismantle the monument was signed by the mayor of Kölön, and uh, this information was recently confirmed by Samvel Lulugan, a member of the board of the Central Council of German Armenians. As for the Grey Wolves, they have a role to play, but they are not the only ones doing this. It's a long story, but of course the Grey Wolves don't do this. Some German politician circles are interested in this too. Mostly, however, this is regulated by the political power of Turkey. Grey Wolves don't have so many levers. The Turkish state supports the religious unions here, and everything is coordinated through them, Lulugan said in a conversation with Rabarak newspaper. The monument was installed by the initiative called Remembrance, of genocide, whose members are mostly Germans. There is also an Armenian, however, in Tiny 17, the latter did not receive the right to install the monument from the municipality. Different court proceedings were held. They tried to post it through diplomatic channels, but in the end, it was decided that the monument should be dismantled, Lugan informed. From January 23 in the coming year to April 12, uh, training sessions for reservists of the first and the second ranks of the first group of the reservists will be announced in Eastern Armenia. Up to 2,842 citizens will be involved in the exercises, of which 2,579 are rank and the file and junior non-commissioned officers, 98 are senior non-commissioned officers, and 161 are reservists of the official corps with combined motor motorcycles, communication, engineering, and rocket artillery specialists. During the announced training sessions, each citizen is involved for a period of the more than 25 calendar days, from January 23 to April 12, in the coming year, up to 10 units of road construction vehicles will be involved from the bodies with military transport duties to uh, ensure the training sessions. Moscow is making works towards Treaty of Peace concluding between Baku and Yerevan. The Russian Federation is carrying out purposeful work in the political sphere in the direction of blocking transport communications in Transcaucasia for concluding a peace treaty between Baku and Yerevan, as well as settling the more secure Armenian-Azerbaijan conflicts, Karasimov said during a briefing for foreign military attaches. Speaking about the activities of Russian peacekeepers in Artsakh, he noted that Russian peacekeepers ensured the safe existence of almost the entire population of Artsakh to Eastern Army. During the military operation, the Russian peacekeeping troops ensured the pl placement of more than 10,000 civilians uh, in their locations and later the safe existence of almost the entire population of Artsakh to the territory of Armenia. About 300 wounded were taken to hospitals by air transport of peacekeepers' troops. Moreover, our military group continues to fulfill the task set before them as a guarantor of the possibility of building a peaceful life and returning the residents to their region, said the Russian official. Speaking about the activities of Russian peacekeepers in Artsakh, he noted that the Russian peacekeepers ensured the safe exit of almost the entire population of Artsakh to eastern Armenia. 
In 1918, by the end of March, the Trabzon negotiations had reached an impasse. The Turks first rejected the issue of Armenian autonomy in Western Armenia, then demanded the Transcaucasian delegation to accept the term of the Brest-Litovsk peace treaty, and immediately hand over Kars, Ardahan, and Batum. Although the negotiations were still ongoing on March 30, the Turks presented an ultimatum to the commander of the Batumi fortress, threatening that otherwise they would launch an attack on the city. On April 1, a few days before these events, the head of the delegation had received a telegram from the Transcaucasian government from Tiflis, agreeing to to Sitkar's province, part of Ardvin, but not Batumi to the Turks. In his reply telegram, he insisted on accepting the Brest-Litovsk agreement. On March 28, Cengel informed Rav Bey, the head of the Turkish delegation, that they accept the Brest agreement and further negotiations will continue based on it. You can read more about the negotiations on the website of Western Armenian TV. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Eastern Armenia confirms that the UN Special Rapporteur on Cultural Rights has, a, has sent a message question to Baku expressing concern about the destruction and appropriate of Armenian historical, cultural and religious heritage in Artsakh. The report also mentions the targeting of pe pe people, monuments and symbols violations of the international humanitarian law. The message refers to the judgment of the UN International Court of Justice of December 7, 2021. In September 19, information about the attack and ethnic cleansing as well as number of other issues. The speaker person of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ani Badalian, said in response to ISOR AM. Inquiry in her comment, which was published on the department's website, it is not worthy that the UN Special Rapporteurs have repeatedly referred to Baku's violations of Artsakh people's rights, including cultural rights and cases of destruction and mutilation of Armenian heritage. Unfortunately, even the above-mentioned legally binding decision of the International Court of Justice did not stop the policy towards the Armenian religious and cultural heritage. At the same time, official Yerevan considers it important for the international community to document these realities, which is of primary importance for the prevention of similar crimes and the establishment of an atmosphere of dialogue and stable peace in the region. The Gerd Mans Shirvan Nahijevan Pan Armenian Union issued a statement about the cultural preservation vandalism in Baku. Recently, Azerbaijan regularly organized events dedicated to the preservation of cultural heritage panel discussion. A few days ago, the conference titled So Called Cultural Heritage took place within the framework of which um, a number of discussions were held dedicated to the issue of preservation of tangible and intangible cultural heritages and current challenges. It seems that what is said is not done, so, but it becomes an issue and even ridiculous when next to the so-called protection of cultural heritage by Baku, we put those samples of Armenian culture one by one, which were consistently systematically destroyed by the direct orders of Azerbaijan authorities during the past decades. Can the Azerbaijan authorities who are concerned about the preservation of culture answer the simple question of where are the thousands of Hajkars of old Juga and is it moral to build a shooting range on the site of the cemetery? Is it moral to physically preserve the Armenian church in Baku but use it as a warehouse or destroy them? Is the appropriation of the Armenian architecture of Baku and the rejection of Armenia's general uh, cultural preservation step, which if it was once done silently and covertly, is now done openly without fear of punishment, which causes a growing threat of the constitutional of the phenomenon. This is a clear manifestation of religious and ethnic discrimination when there is talk about the preservation of one culture, but in practice the local complete destruction of another culture is carried out. It turns that the culture destroying government talks about so cultural preservation. This is called cultural preservationist vandalism, which is a threat to regional stability in democratization on the modern world. This is all for today. Goodbye. Yeah.